The Dodgers are calling up a young stud named Bobby Miller to make his major league debut. He throws absolute gas, touches one-on-one, -on -one, mixes five pitches. Let's dig into his mix and plan of attack. Let's start with a brief overview of his mix. He throws a four-seam fastball, a sinker, a slider, a curveball, and a changeup. He's a five-pitch guy. The four-seam fastball average is 99.5. It's touched 101.5 this year. Sinker average is 99.2. It's also touched 101. The slider is a cross between a shorter sweeper slider and kind of a bullet at 88 miles per hour. This is what I often call like the Dodger slider, so to speak. And the curveball is around 81 miles per hour. Changeup is around 88 miles per hour. The primary difference between lefties and righties for Bobby is just that he's more slider to righties, and then he opts for the changeup and the curveball to lefties. He's almost exclusively four-seam fastball to lefties, and his four-seam is also his preferred pitch to righties, but he also mixes in that sinker down inside, as we're going to take a look at. But let's start with the four-seam. It's really a velocity-based pitch for him. The shape is just okay for the most part. He gets 15.2 inches of vertical break on average, which is a tick below the 16 inches of vertical break you're going to see on the average four-seam fastball in Major League Baseball. He also gets eight inches of arm side run on the pitch. His swing and miss on it was slightly below what you'd have as the Major League average at AAA. Bobby only got 18% swing and miss here on his four-seam, and the Major League average for four-seam fastballs was somewhere in the low 20s, around 22%. He also had a 302 x Woba on the offering, which is kind of right around average. For the most part, contact here wasn't doing too much damage for him. And I think the reason for that is his command of it, is, which has actually been pretty good for the most part at AAA. I was kind of impressed by this. Usually guys who throw hard do not really have a strong ability to put the ball where they need to, but he does a really good job of keeping it at the top of the zone, which you can see here. He really hones in on this pitch there and allows the shape to work despite it being slightly below average shape. He really needs this pitch to stay up for it to be successful. Righties are having a bit more trouble with the pitch than lefties right now at AAA, which makes me think He's maybe going to be a guy who stacked lefties against him a bit more on opposing teams. Eno Saris was gracious enough. He's a writer for The Athletic to give me his AAA Stuff Plus model. So now we get to see Driveline's model in combination with Eno's. Um, so we can kind of con compare and contrast, so to speak, there. And they both kind of like this pitch. Eno has it as a 143, so about 43% above the Major League average forcing fastball. And Driveline has it as a 126, so 26% above the major league average fastball. No matter which way you look at this, this is a strong pitch, it's a plus pitch. The reality is, is that it's just really hard to have a bad fastball when you're averaging 99 to 100 miles per hour as Bobby Miller is. If he ticked down a little bit on the vertical break, that carry side of things, there's a chance that pitch would regress maybe to be more average than the plus pitch I think it is. But you also have to factor in that he pitched a lot of his games in the AAA PCL, the Pacific Coast League where generally some of the stadiums are at elevation, which can mess with the environmental effects and how that affects pitch shapes. The problem is that I'm not particularly confident in how to correct for something like this. We ran into this a little bit with Brandon Fott as he came up, but I didn't actually see too much difference there between AAA and the major league level. So I'm kind of taking Bobby's numbers at face value and just assuming this 15 inches of vertical break and ride is consistent with what we're gonna see at the major league level. I will admit there is a chance it's maybe a bit higher, but that would really only help the pitch. Bobby Miller's sinker is just a subtle modification to his four-seam fastball. It has 13 inches of vertical break and 14 inches of arm side run at 99.2 miles per hour, so it's dropping a bit more and running a bit more arm side. The swing and miss here is only 7%, which is pretty low, even for a sinker, but it's mainly in his repertoire for weak contact, and you can see that in the ground ball rate, which is around 71%, where the major league average for sinker ground ball rate is somewhere around 54%. It gets hit harder than anything in his repertoire, but that's probably normal for ground ball pitchers like this. Damage that is a hard on the ground isn't really gonna create too much slug, so that's really not too much of a worry to me. It's easier to hit the ball hard on the ground than it is in the air. Location here is primarily down into righties. Again, this is a righty-focused pitch for him. When he pulls the pitch to his glove side, so into the lefty batter box against the righty, is where it's gonna allow some damage. I imagine this is probably because it's coming out of whatever line, fastball line or slider line he set up prior in a prior pitch. Eno Saris' Stuff Plus model sees this as a 103, Driveline sees it as a 102, so they both see it as an average pitch. And I think that's kind of all it is, right? It's an elevation changer for him, it's something to work down in the zone to right, he's down in. His fastball is up so much that I think, again, in the context of his repertoire, especially to righties, this pitch works really well. Now onto his slider, which I think is his best pitch. It's 88 miles per hour with negative two inches of vertical break and five inches of horizontal movement or cut or sweep or whatever you want to call it. Swing and a miss here is a nice 39%, which is above the 32% you're going to see at the major league level for sliders. x -Woba on the pitch at AAA this year has been a bit high. It's up at 488 in his four starts. You're generally going to want to see a slider x -Woba somewhere below, say, 300 or so for good plus pitches at the major league level. But 
this is a small sample and we can also dig in and understand that when this pitch is up in the zone it's getting beat a bit by righties you can see that the differential here between the red and the blue blue is low x woba red is high expected woba and the pitches are that are up in the zone are most likely arm side misses you might hear this as backup sliders on a broadcast a lot the pitch doesn't actually back up though i like looking at it more as just it's it's missing his target if he's going down away and he misses arm side it's going to look like the pitch is backing up when that's not exactly the case the pitch is not literally backing up it's still actually moving to his glove side he's just kind of off on his sights so to speak if you think of the sights on a gun he's just having that in maybe in a little more to a righty and because of that he's missing arm side with the pitch eno stuff plus model sees this as a 152 so 52 percent above the average major league slider drivelines model sees this as a 119 so there's a bit of disparity here i'm unsure why Eno's model is higher on it i would bet that's because he's getting five inches of sweep at 88 miles per hour that window and more drop than usual on the pitch which is a hard balance to strike where driveline might just want more sweep it's always going to prefer the larger sweep to get more expected whiffs so to speak the whiff is one of the strongest outcomes you could have in an individual pitch it comps really well to bruce dog gratterall slider on the dodgers it also looks a bit like garrett cole's but obviously bobby doesn't have the command cole has if he could get to that point though it could be a pretty devastating offering cole kind of works away with his fastball though where bobby's kind of more up so there's a little bit of difference i think between those two pitches but the raw traits of the pitch for garrett cole match up relatively well with bobby miller his changeup is actually a pretty big pitch for him too versus the lefties it's more of a velo separator than a drop separator which is going to lend itself a bit more to weak contact and ground balls rather than whiffs at the major league level it's 80 miles per hour on average, eight inches of vertical break, 17 inches of arm side run. x wob is really strong down at 199. And the whiffs are at 27%, which is slightly below average for a changeup. But again, as I just said, I think this is more kind of your ground ball pitch and your weak contact offering for him against lefties. Something to work away in the zone. And he locates the pitch really well there away from lefties for the most part. Sometimes a chase pitch out, but it works again because of that ground ball nature in the zone in that bottom right quadrant away, down away from a left-handed hitter. Eno's model sees this as a 124, so it really likes it, 24% above the average changeup. Driveline sees this as an 80, and I think that's because the sample of changeups, you always have to look at changeups relative to the four seam fastball. And when you do that to a fastball that's 100 miles per hour, which you run into for the most part is not too much of a sample to go off of. So I wonder whether Eno's model is kind of working off a different sample than drivelines here. Um, but I, I definitely agree more, I'd say, with Eno's model. And I think this is an above average pitch. We see that on results. We see that on x -Wobo. We see that on location. We see that on the velo separation of this pitch being about 11 miles per hour, uh, slower than his fastball. And I think it's a strong pitch. I think it's, he didn't, if he didn't have this pitch, he'd run into some problems with lefties, I think, for the most part, um, because of how the four seam is getting kind of hit by them. Um, but also because the slider kind of works more, say, down, down, in. So this gives him kind of the ability to work up, work down with the slider, and then work away with the changeup, which I think is really important. Okay, last pitch here is quicker on the curveball. This is around 81 miles per hour, negative 12 inches of vertical break, 11 inches of sweep. And again, this is kind of a lefty weapon for him. It's not in the zone a ton. Um, it, it, he commands it kind of both as a strike stealer and a below the zone whiff pitch. And I think it's just around an average pitch. It kind of works like this sinker just to left-handed hitters. It just gives him another element to work off of it probably works off that top high in the zone fastball line if he doesn't want to go say to his slider off that fastball line where the separation is going to be greater right out of hand between those two pitches so say he misses kind of high up with his pitch i think he could really work this well as a strike sealer at the top of the zone Eno's model sees this as a below average pitch at a 90 driveline sees it as a 94. so again it's like a sinker it's fine in the context of his repertoire it works well as i said off the visual line of the high heater and he can bury it when he wants i think again if you don't have say a dominant lefty weapon it's totally fine to go with a couple weapons versus lefties and his ability to throw these and make them kind of around average pitches i think is really important bobby miller is a really good example of velocity carrying a repertoire i often talk about stuff so the combination of the velocity of a pitch the movement of a pitch and what arm angle or release it is coming from and more stuff gives you more margin for error in the strike zone but i think with a guy like bobby miller his stuff is driven by velocity. It's not driven by the combination, say, of velocity and shape. He doesn't really get a ton of carry on the fastball, a ton of sweep on the slider, which his stuff model is really gonna like. What he does instead is just pounds everything with really good velocity, up to 90 on the slider, 101 on the fastball, changeup's really hard. That's what buys him his margin for error. And I think because of that, he might be slightly more of a location-dependent pitcher than a pure stuff, let it eat middle of the zone pitcher. And looking through his heat maps, as we kind of look through here a bit, 
I was actually impressed at how tight some of the locations were. His fastball was up, his sinker was down in, his changeups down away to lefties, the slider was away from righties. And when it's up, that's when it gets beat. And you'd expect a good stuff pitcher to be able to have that slider live in the strike zone. But I think with a guy like Bobby, although the stuff is high, I think it's more location based. It's like a, it's an odd combination of location with stuff where I think if he's in the right spots in the zone, he's going to pitch relatively well. But if there's ever, say, a velocity downtick with him, say, long term, he might run into some issues. He actually reminds me a bit of Noah Syndergaard, the old Noah Syndergaard on the Mets, who was a velocity dependent pitcher. He didn't really have the strongest shapes, but he worked really well because his locations were good and he had really strong velocity. So we always thought the stuff was great, but the stuff was driven by velocity, it was not driven by outlier movement or anything like that. And I think that's the case with a guy like Bobby Miller. Um, and in looking through his repertoire here, I, I think you almost look past, which we haven't mentioned at all, the AAA ERA, which is above five. It's really bad, right? The K's are down, the walks are up. He's getting beat up, but I do think the Dodgers calling him up and giving him the shot right after Dave Roberts said that he wasn't a guy that was going to contribute right away is a bit of an endorsement, A, that they have the need, but B, I think he's going to keep them in games. I think there's more here than we're looking at purely on the, on the, uh, the surface level metrics of ERA, K per nine, walk per nine, K minus walk, etc. He's a guy that in the underlying stuff as I'm looking through here, I think there is the template of a very, very good major league pitcher. It's a velocity dependent guy who is a really unique ability, I think, to command the ball beyond his velocity. I think that's maybe what carries him more than just thinking he's a velocity guy that lets it eat middle of the zone. That's the distinction I think between a Bobby Miller and some other guys who have a really strong stuff across Major League Baseball. This is a fun debut. He throws gas. Any starting pitcher coming up throwing nine, uh, 101 is a fantastic watch. Um, this is going to be great. I'm really excited to see him. I think he's going to have a little bit of a leash here. Now, this is a guy like Michael Grove eventually takes over for him, but Gavin Stone, Bobby Miller, we talked about them a bit. I'm excited to see this debut. Thanks for watching this video. Comments, as always, what do you think of him? Long term below, or I appreciate it.